Axie Infinity and Ronin Network have been hacked for over $650 million. How in the world did this happen? If you haven't seen the news that broke late last night, we're going to cover this. Information around the world's largest NFT blockchain company. How did this happen? How could $650 million be completely stolen in the blink of an eye? We're going to cover that right here on this video, along with what I think is some hopeful news for anyone that has been impacted. Don't go away. You want to watch this coming right up. Hey friends, Wes Spencer here. Welcome to the channel. There's a good chance you've stumbled here just because of the Google algorithm sending you here. Really glad you stopped by. We're going to tackle and dive in a little deep into this hack and, and really understand how it happened, what's going on in the middle of this, and I'm a cybersecurity expert, so I'm gonna cover this from a cybersecurity expert's point of view, and we're gonna point at the end of the video to where you need to really think hard about what this hack means for you, and even if you weren't directly impacted by it, the lessons we can learn to make sure that you keep your crypto safe so that the next time this happens, because it's not a question of if, it's a question of when, you will know what to do. Okay, so hit like, hit subscribe, and if you like this, definitely share it with a friend because those things go a really, really long way. So indeed, as we show here in the news, we're gonna see it right here. The news is true. All of a sudden, the Axie uh, bridge, so this is the Ronin bridge, which is like, think of this as the bridge that's used to, to transfer assets in and out of the Axie Infinity game network. So the bridge itself has been completely shut down. The bridge was the source of the attack. And so we're going to cover a little bit more how all of this happened. But I wanted to just start with this and show you, yep, the bridge is indeed offline. It is, there's, they're saying maintenance underway. Now, they're not hiding the fact that there's been a hack. I'm going to share with you information around all of this. And subsequently, we're seeing news across the board. This comes from the Washington Post, but literally every major news outlet is covering this. Why? Not because they care so much about, you know, Axie Infinity, even though it's an extremely large game, much more because of the size and nature of the hack. So here's the deal. These hacks that have been happening in the crypto space are in the tens, hundreds of millions. I won't be surprised next year for us to see the first hack that's over a billion dollars. Now, the reason that these are such astounding is like, Take all of these heist movies that are out there, like Ocean's Eleven, for example, one of my favorites. They don't make away with anywhere near close to this. And so let's just break this down and say, if we just ignore the fact that it's crypto related, $600 million is stunning. Like this is a really incomprehensible amount of money that has been completely stolen. The good news is we're going to dive into this later in the video, but I just want to tease it for you is it may not be last be gone forever. See, here's one of the great things about crypto is especially with open ledgers, we get to see where it went. We get to be able to track it. And we've actually seen some, for example, the Polygon network hack. I covered that. I'll put a link in the description down below so you can get to that one too. The funds were actually returned. And one of the reasons the funds were returned was for the bad guy, the ability to rinse and launder that amount of money to use on their own was next to impossible, unlike cash. So there is some hope for all of this, but I just I want you to just pause for a minute and recognize $600 million is an insane amount of money. There are very few people in the world that have that much money, right? Including yours truly. And so this, we just need to pause and say, this is why it's hitting the main news outlets, right? And so they talk about all of this. They talk about 625 million. The executives are, are around and aware of all of this. Um, and we're gonna dive into some more details around all this. One of the first people to break this story, and I wanted to give some credit to this Reddit user is Kobe at Kobe if you want to follow them. They've got some really great um, crypto information and uh, tons and tons of followers, so go follow them. And this is what they said. They said they noticed that the Axie Bridge was exploited for $600 million six days ago. Like, for real, six days ago. This is a point that we've got to dive into. How in the world did it take six days for this to the money to start siphoning out. And I will show you this. It is correct. Kobe was right. It did take six days for it to be noticed. This is shocking. See, I think many of us can forgive a hack. We see hacks every single day. Hacks are just weakness in code that a bad guy bends to their own uses. 
We've been seeing hacks forever. What's really bad is when something of this magnitude happens and it takes six days for the owners to notice it, really makes you scratch your head and say, how is it that you didn't know this? Were you either hiding and covering it up and running around in panic, which is really bad, or did you legitimately, honestly not know? We may never know the answers to that unless the federal government subpoenas from Axie Infinity some information from them. And I'm not even sure, based on the fact that Axie Infinity is not U.S.-based, that they'll have the capability to do that. Maybe their own sovereign nation will do that. Regardless, until we have that data... We still have to be dumbfounded that it took six days. Look, if it were a small amount, you know, a million dollars in crypto, which I know is amazing, I'm saying is a small amount, I get it. But $600 million, like your bridge was literally draining like crazy. And I'm even gonna show this to you in the article in just a minute. The only way they found out was a couple users complained about it. Like, hey, I can't withdraw some funds from the bridge. Oh, that's interesting. Let's go look. Uh oh. $600 $600 million gone. Like I still, I, I don't, I don't get it. Right. I'm a cyber security guy. The ability to know and see and have insights into your infrastructure is the only way you stay ahead of these kinds of things. So I, I have to wonder, was it missing? I really don't know. But anyway, so this is one of the first that kind of warned around uh, about it. And the, the user also talks a little bit about FTX's liquidation and the, apparently the bad guy, not even apparently, I'll show this to you. Um, the, the hacker actually sent some of the stolen funds over to FTX. FTX actually responded back and said, we are investigating. We're aware of this. So it's pretty interesting stuff. And then I wanted to show you this tweet as well. And by the way, every link I've showed will be in the description down below. So you'll be able to get to everything I'm showing you. Everything will be available for you. So take a look at this. Here's the thread itself. This is from a vetted Axie Insider. So this is from uh, Alexander. I, I'm not super, let me disclose this. I'm not, I'm not an Axie Infinity user. I have no crypto with them. I'm not invested in them in any sort of way. So you'll have to forgive me that some of you are watching this. And you're like, you don't know who Psychout is? No, I don't know who PsychOut is. I don't follow this group, but obviously he is um, with Axie. So, uh, and and I feel for him, right? One of the things I want to say before I even go into his tweets is I've dealt with, I don't know, getting close to 100 organizations that have been through a breach. And I know the fear. I know how difficult it is. I know the stress of all of these outside users. How could this happen? What are you doing to fix it? I want my funds back. I get it. And not just in the crypto space, I've been a founder of a cybersecurity company called Perch Security. And at Perch, we dealt with a lot of breached organizations. And I understand the lost sleep, the tears, the the, the griefs, the lost funds. Like it's it's miserable stuff. So first of all, my heart goes out to everyone that's been impacted. I don't want to be one of those that's just throwing stones. Um, but but there's some important things we need to talk about that are gonna probably be some stones that I've got to throw here. Okay, so been intense 36 hours. So according to this user, so when when um, he says this came in uh, today, actually it's 7:45, so just a few hours ago this came in. So at least 36 hours, right? We can read into this that the Axie Infinity has been aware, and this kind of tracks, I think, with most of the the data. So so only 36 hours that they've been aware of. So you know a little like a day and a half. Uh, pretty, pretty wild that you guys didn't see that. It happened six days ago. Been working with everybody, the board, key cybersecurity personnel. So, and they're going through a deep forensics review to sh- ensure that there's no lingering threat. Okay. In other words, they're still making sure we shut everything off, like the bridge is down, and we're going to make sure that bad guys still don't have access. But look at this right here. This t- this tweet right here is even more twel- uh, telling and much more important. So they say this was a social engineering attack combined with a human error from December 2021. And that is the case, my friends. We're going to dive into what that human error is here in just a minute, but my goodness, was it a huge mistake? And here's the deal with a lot of these hacks. While there's some information inside of it that I'm going to get to with some speculation around some things that can happen, I am going to, I do want to say this. So many hacks come down to simple errors. In fact, we, we can boil that down to two human, they said one human error, it's really two human errors that came to this. It wasn't some like elite hack. It did have some p- potentially some inside knowledge, but look at this. Two things that happened. One, a social engineering attack. That typically means a social engineering attack is a phishing attack, usually, or something exploiting the human. See, humans have this ability to just trust one another. And so we don't know the nature of the the social engineering attack. I imagine it probably was a phishing email, but the users, the admins, some admins of Axie Infinity fell for it. And that's where the initial access was granted. And then they, they say a human error from December, 2021. We'll get to what that is in just a minute. So let's take a look at these actual transactions. So here they are right here. If you followed when I dove into the uh, Polygon network attack, I 
showed the power of Etherscan at hand. I was actually diving into how the hacker was communicating with Poly Network or Polygon Network at the same time while, while the whole thing was happening. I'm like producing a video while the two are talking to each other through the Ethereum blockchain. And I want to show this to you here as well. This is Etherscan and they're doing a really good job because they've tagged the stolen funds and now we're aware of it and we can track it and we can see it. So here are all of the transactions related. And what I'm going to do is instead of, and, and by the way, you can, the reason I know this is because they've tagged this as Ronin Bridge Exploiter. So there are three different addresses attached to the actual bridge that was exploited. And I know I haven't talked about how this has happened. I just want to show you the, the, the transactions first so you can see this. So here are some of them. So here's the first one, or the, actually this is Ronin Bridge um, Exploiter 2. So at this point, there's nothing left. It's pretty much been drained, but you can see a whole bunch of Ethereum coming uh, in and out, right? So all of this has been, this is like the middle wallet where the stolen funds went from the original source of the, the, the bridge ex exploit into the bridge two, which is what you see here. And then they were then subsequently moved over to bridge three. And here is bridge three right here. Also notice that it's been zeroed out. Nothing in bridge three. This is where it all went to. But you can you can see some of the bridge two to bridge three transactions. Look where they went. They went to FTX. So now FTX is a bit on the hot seat as well. FTX is a well-known exchange. And FTX, I am hoping that you did not send out and allow these funds to be, to be sold. There's a lot of speculation on Twitter. How could FTX have allowed this, right? All of this, like hundreds and hundreds of Ethereum coming in from one single address. Yikes. Do you guys not have controls around this? So I'm not going to speculate yes or no. I don't yet know from FTX, are those funds being held right now? Or did they foolishly allow them to be sold? And who knows where the funds have gone since then? I don't have the answer to that. But what we do know is the bad guy took the stolen sum of the stolen funds, many, many hundreds of Ethereum, but not all. And they sent them to FTX, presumably to be sold. So I'm hoping that FTX had enough good controls in place, both KYC controls and just anomalous money transaction controls to say, well, look at all this incoming funds. We're going to freeze this for a few days till we understand what, ha what is happening. If they did that, then potentially some of these funds will be returned because they're sitting, FTX could be sitting on them. Uh, but there's going to be a lot of negatives, a whole lot of... Um, uh, oof, um, yuck, that uh, best I can say for FTX, if that money has actually been stolen and sold, um, that is, that is not going to be a good thing at all. Okay. So the last thing what we want to show is let me bring up again, um, the, the actual stolen funds. So I'm going to show you how we can find, uh, the rest of the funds sitting in the wallet. What we're going to do is we're just going to go up here to all filters on Etherscan and we're going to talk, uh, we're going to type in Ronin, um, bridge, and then it should come up. Yep. Here we go. So these are the, there's the actual bridge itself, which we don't need to see that, but here's the very first uh, Ronin bridge exploiter. And notice, indeed, most of the funds are still sitting in the parent wallet. So I showed you bridge, I showed you the address for bridge two and bridge three, where the attacker was eventually sending some of those funds out to FTX. But here is the good news. The good news is 500, basically half a billion dollars is still sitting here in the original bridge one wallet where the money was stolen. It's literally just sitting here. You can see all of this. Also, there was a lot of speculation as you look at this of like, why are, if, if we look at incoming, let's go sort for view incoming transactions here. I, you couldn't see this, but I clicked right here as the filter. You can see a whole bunch of incoming transactions that were still coming in for hours and hours and hours after. And there's a lot of questions on why, like who are even some of these addresses that are coming in from? And what I'm hearing from, and I can't confirm this, is that these are no, before the bridge was shut down because because they had exploited the bridge itself, that all funds going into the bridge were then that then going to the bad guy, that that's what you're seeing here is continued funds from the bridge, not just the original stolen amounts, but incoming until he shut the bridge down, all going out to the bad guy's wallet. That makes sense to me, but I can't confirm that that's correct. But I did want to just share that little bit of knowledge. So you can even see these transactions hitting from the bridge coming into um, the attacker's wallet, this bridge exploiter. And this is why they're sitting on, as I mentioned before, a whole time ton of funds. Let me go back so we can see this again. I don't know how many times I have to back. There we go. 175,000 Ethereum still sitting in the wallet. So what does that teach us? That teaches us this right here. It's potentially correct, potentially possible that the funds could be returned. 
because Etherscan has now marked them and companies like Chainalysis and others are going to be following this, it's going to be very difficult to rinse and, and basically launder that amount of crypto, especially something as well known as Ethereum and as publicly available as Ethereum is in blockchains to see it. It's going to be really difficult. So what could happen with this? Well, one potential outcome could be if the bad guy themselves realizes the difficulty in giving in, in rinsing the funds, maybe they give them all back in exchange for what's called a bug bounty. And then Axie would give them a million dollars or two million dollars as a bug bounty and they give all the funds back. So we don't know. We need to stay tuned to this story to see what's going to happen. But it's staggering to me. I mean, guys, staggering to me that this is what's happening right now. And the money is just sitting there. We're looking looking at it. Let me go back to it. You and I are looking at the stolen funds right here. And because they're there, because they haven't been moved, they might, there is some hope that they might get returned. So how did all of this happen? Right here is their newsletter. There, this is where, this is directly from Ronan themselves. Again, I will put a link to this in the description so you can get to it, but they talk about what happened. They halted the bridge. They're working with law enforcement, forensics folks to, to do what we can to get funds back or to reimburse. And so here we go. So there's been a security breach. We discovered this on March 23rd. So uh, I, uh, they're saying this was, ex this, this was discovered many days ago, almost a, a week ago. Is, and again, this is when it all happened. Um, no, 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 no. Let me correct myself. I misread this. They just, this is, I don't like this wording. So earlier today, so today they discovered this. This was written um, a day ago. Okay. So they're like, basically yesterday we discovered that an attack happened a week ago. <laughs> That's the way they should have said this. They should have said today we discovered that last week we had an attack. That's how they should have said it. Um, and then they, they mentioned what happened, the validator nodes and one Axie DAO validator node was, was compromised. So we're going to get into this of how, of how it happened. So here are the details. So it can, here's, here's kind of what happened and I'm going to get a little bit technical here, but it's important that you know this. So there are nine validator nodes that all have to operate in order for transactions in the Ronin bridge and the Ethereum network that it's tied into to actually operate. However, only five out of nine validator signatures are needed. So of nine, only five are necessary to sign a transaction and make it actually authenticated. So what does that mean? Well, for a bad guy, you only have to get access to five. You don't need all nine. And there's they, they talked about this earlier, why they didn't have all nine or like eight of nine, for example. And a lot of it came down to like technical problems of, oh, time sync issues and things like this. So they'd made the, the decision a long time ago. You only need five in order for this to work. In other words, if a bad guy theoretically got access to five different validator nodes, they own the system. And that's exactly what happened. So look at this. The attacker managed to get control over Sky Mavis. Sky Mavis is the owner of Axie Infinity. So they got access to, to their four and then one third party validator run by the Axie DAO. That's how they got their five. So they breached four via social engineering. Remember, we talked about that. And the last one came from some kind of attack, which we're going to dive into on Axie DAO. So they say that they set this validator scheme up to be decentralized. So it limits an attack like this. <laughs> Oops. Oops, there's a lot of lessons learned from this, right? It, it doesn't do anything when you get access to five out of out of eight or five out of nine. So this and then again, look right here. This traces back to November 2021 when Sky Mavis requested help from Axie Dow to distribute free transactions due to immense user load. So I had to go do some digging and some archaeology to kind of understand what they were talking about here. And this is what they're talking about. Here's a link. And apparently what was happening was back in November that uh, there was a lot of because transactions were free, there was a lot of bloat in the system from like like spam messages and things like this. And users couldn't get actual transactions to, to go across, which is the lifeblood of an NFT based blockchain game. And so what they did was you can see right here, they encountered this issue. Ronin's sidechain free nodes overwhelmed with traffic, causing everything to fail. And so. What they did was they said, hey, we're going to put new rules in place and you have to register your account. But if you register your account, then you are valid and will receive free transactions because now we know who you are. We could shut you down if you're spamming the system, things like this. And one of the ways that this happened, let me even show you the tweet for all of this right here. So this is Sky Mavis's tweet way back from uh, November of last year. Uh, they talked about how this was happening. And one of the mechanisms they used to do this was they said, we are going to use the DAO, the actual Axie Infinity DAO, to be able to sign a transaction on our behalf. And this is going to help with the load issues. But well, wouldn't you know it? One of the major blunders they made was they failed after they dealt with the load issue and that transaction, that update came out to force users to have to authenticate themselves. They failed to decommission the ability for the Axie Infinity DAO 
to be able to sign transactions on Axie's behalf. It was a huge blunder. I understand why they set it up temporarily to be able to help with load, but here's one of the critical key components of cybersecurity. If you set something up intended for temporary use, you must make sure that it is decommissioned in the proper time. I cannot tell you how many hacks have happened simply because of this challenge. Many of you in the States remember the big gas pipeline attack that happened last year. This was the attack against um, the huge pipeline company that, that happened and forgetting their name all of a sudden. And that's exactly how the same thing happened. The bad guys got in through an old VPN server that was never decommissioned. It was it was never, it was decommissioned for use, but its use, its access was still online. And that's how the bad guys got in. So I can tell you as, a, as an expert here, this was a critical blunder. And they even know that it was a critical blunder. Let's go back and look at this. So um, they, they mention that they the, the, this this thing had happened. The Axie DAO allowed, allow listed Sky Mavis to sign various transactions on its own behalf. And so theoretically, if a bad guy got access to that, which they did, then what does that mean? That means that you now have access to five because they breached four from social engineering and then they used this allow listing once they got access to this particular um, uh, validator and use that as their fifth. That's how it happened. This was bad. This was discontinued. So the use of it was discontinued, but they never revoked the allow list. Had they revoked it, this attack would not have happened, at least not in the form and function in which it was carried out today. So that's pretty sad. You look at the actions taken, they, they addressed the incident as soon as they knew it, but again, Man, six days went by before they even noticed it. That's that's egregious. Where they're in touch with security teams at exchanges, they're in the process of migrating nodes. They've temporarily paused the Ronin Bridge. Uh, they've temporarily exchange, uh, disabled the Katana decentralized exchange, which I guess is their own exchange they're using. I've never used it, and they're working with Chainalysis to monitor the stolen funds. Okay, and so next steps, you can see you know all the information here. Why does the validator threshold only five when they have nine? And they agree that that was a mistake. So now what are they doing? Moving forward, it will be eight out of nine. And and I think that's that's huge because now I don't know who owns Axie Infinity owns four, the Dow owns the fifth, but that means there's still at least four more around. I don't know who owns them, but that again, that makes it much more difficult because you've got to get access to eight. Doesn't mean it can't happen. It just means the complexity definitely goes up. They published the link where the hackers, where the stolen funds are. I've already shown that to you. Um, and then how did this happen? They mention a little bit more around this is that something about this gas-free RPC node was used as the ability to get access to the, the DAO, the, the fifth required component. I don't know the details of that. They haven't published how that happened, what the exploit was with all of this. Um, is Ronin safe to use? No, at this point it's not, which is why they, I'm just answering this for you. It's why they've shut the whole thing down. This is why right here, the bridge is completely offline. So there you go. There's all of the information around this. So I wanna close on a couple of different things that I think we've learned from all this and something you really need to know if you're listening into this. First of all, if you are impacted, my heart goes out to you. I hope you didn't lose too many funds. As someone who's lost funds on both Mt. Gox and Cripsy, I know how it feels. Second thing that I want to talk about that I think is more important is they made some egregious mistakes here. Axie Infinity. They failed to decommission the, the, the white listing stuff, the allow listing on the Axie DAO. They failed to, they were lazy, I would just say, because they allowed five nodes. They even admitted that there should have been more nodes that were required to sign transactions. Five out of nine, and now they're rushing to eight out of nine. They should have done that a long time ago. So that was a huge omission. Also, we, we know in this day and age, almost all breaches happen from attacking humans. And this is what happened. We still don't know all of the de details, but we know the four Axie validator node access came from stolen credentials through a social engineering attack. They should have been watching for this. They should have had better controls around this. But I can't hate on them too bad because companies large and small fall prey to social engineering attacks all the time. But I don't think they have good visibility into their security infrastructure. Why did it take you six days to respond to this? Not that responding right away would have fixed anything. Let's be clear. Once the funds were gone, they're gone. But it just shows, it just adds to the, the storyline, the narrative, the optics that you weren't watching things the way you should have been watching things. And maybe you didn't have good enough security in place. Who knows? Another thing that I want to talk about for you as a user, this goes back to the age old two adages of cybersecurity. First of all, not your keys, not your crypto. So users that have put funds into the bridge or were sending funds into the bridge, this goes back to all things with crypto. If you're not holding it yourself, 
You are not responsible for, or I shouldn't say responsible, you don't have the ability to fully secure your funds. You're trusting in some other group or person in some case. And this is exactly what happens. So many breaches where funds, crypto funds are stolen is because it comes back to this, not your keys, not your crypto. The other big rule of crypto is this. If not your keys, not your crypto is the first one, then the second rule of crypto is simply this. Never invest more than you're willing to lose. We must remember this. And so if you're someone that had a significant amount of holdings sitting there in the, their exchange and you lost it, I am so sorry for that. But also remember, in anything, never put more into something than you're willing to lose. It doesn't matter who the platform or the company or whoever it is that you're defying with. If you only if $100,000 is your nest egg and you put all 100000 into one platform to get stolen, you got to do it with the knowledge of, am I willing to lose it? I cannot express that enough. Now, the last thing I want to cover is, do I think regulation would fix this? There's so much discussion in the federal government circles around crypto regulation. And I want to be really loud and clear on this. I don't oppose regulation. I think in many ways it will help steer things and add some stability and some accountability. But let's be honest, regulation would not have fixed this problem. The reason it wouldn't have is because the way this attack happened is the way the attacks happen on anything outside of crypto too. Social engineering, phishing attacks, my gosh. This stuff happens like crazy. And so I think uh, regulation in this case is less about crypto regulation and more about good cybersecurity hygiene, which was clearly neglected and failed to some degree with Axie Infinity. Now, do I think people will get their, their funds back? I am actually personally more hopeful then not hopeful that the funds will come back because they're still sitting there in the wallet. There's a good chance if you were impacted until those funds are completely washed forever, there is a chance of getting those funds back. And so what I'd love to see Axie Infinity do is reach out to the attacker and they can do this by signing a transaction to the attacker, <laughs> just like we saw in the Poly Network stuff and say to them, we're willing to give a bug bounty. If you'll give us the mon- all of the money back, then we'll give you up to t- we'll give you two million dollars. Now, why would they say I'm going to trade two million for six hundred fifty million? Well, the reason is because the six hundred six hundred fifty million was stolen. So they're going to give those stolen funds back. But then Axie Infinity will say we are giving you as a free gift two million. Well, which would you rather have six hundred fifty million and potentially going to jail or being washed of all of that and giving everything back? There's no they I don't know how it's going to work in their own countries of origin. Right. But giving the funds back completely free and then getting two million as a gift. I, look, I don't know. This is the whole idea of blockchain of it's all open and transparent, but that could still happen. And let's hope something like that happens. And until then, Axie is committed to reimbursing lost funds. But six hundred fifty million is a lot. I don't think that'll happen at least not quickly. So we'll see what happens out of all of this. So there you have it. There's all the news. The last thing I wanted to cover is just a bit of conjecture, a bit of speculation that I'm putting on my cybersecurity hat. You guys know, I, if you follow me, I don't do crypto speculation because nobody knows the market, but I'm happy to speculate in cybersecurity because this is my area of expertise. I wonder how the users were able to get not just access to the four Axie Infinity wallets via social engineering. Seems like it was probably pretty insidious, something they they knew that those four users would fall prey to. Or maybe they got access to one person and then it was an admin and that gave them access to all the others as well. I don't know. But I wonder how they got that and how they knew that they could leverage an an RPC exploit to get access to the inf- the Axie DAO to sign a transaction on their behalf. That seems to me like some inside knowledge. So where I would be starting as law enforcement is I would start with all current users, like employees of Axie. I would start with all terminated, and I would start with all contractors. I would look at the inside job first. Let me give you an example of this. At my bank, we had an ATM that got robbed. And we looked at the video footage of the robbed ATM and here's what happened. It was on a Saturday morning and all of a sudden one camera was clicked and pushed. This is back in the old days when you had these cameras that weren't on the bubble domes so you could actually move them. So one camera, the one camera in the entire thing that had to be moved first, a guy with a broomstick or somebody moved it. And then another camera that was had another angle was moved. And then a third was moved. And then they came up from the side and covered the pinhole camera on the ATM. And then in five minutes, they had the whole thing open and stole the funds. We told the police this was an inside job. They're like, well, how do you know this? I'm like, watch the footage. There is no one on earth unless you had inside knowledge that of, of knowing exactly which cameras to go one, two, three to do. If they had done them out of order, it would have failed. We would have seen the bad guy and we would have known some information on it. And so what they did was they went to our ATM contracting company and 
Lo and behold, they found a user that had been fired a month ago who had serviced that ATM. Long story short, they found the funds. That's all I'll say, but it was an inside job. And so I'm not saying this was an inside job, but there's a lot of information here that seems to me speculative, but really points to this could be an inside job because of their knowledge of how to actually leverage this attack and the order in which it was accomplished. So there you have it. I'm actually hopeful many people will get their funds back. I'll be following this and let's hope that happens. But until then, until next time, I hope you've enjoyed this video and my total deep dive into all of it. If you have questions, leave them in the comments down below. Share this with friends, tweet it out, share it in Telegram, and definitely hit like and subscribe. Thank you guys so very much.